In this lesson, we will do some problems that have to do with linear equations that are a little more abstract. Now, when I say abstract, I mean that they probably won't have very many numbers in them, and there usually won't be a specific procedure you can follow to end up with the result they're looking for. Um, these problems are usually a little bit harder, and they're also a little bit harder to teach, but I'm hoping that these four examples we go through will give you an idea of what I'm talking about. We'll start with a question that shows you a graph and asks you to write the rule for that graph. Looking at the graph, we can tell that it's a linear equation because it's a straight line. And we know that any linear equation can be written as y equals mx plus b, where the m is the slope and the b is the y-intercept. So it's essentially our job to figure out those two things from the graph. What is the slope and what is the y-intercept? It will oftentimes be easiest to find the y-intercept first, but there's no particular order you need to do these things in. Um, we'll go ahead and do the y-intercept first. We know that the y-intercept is the point where the graph crosses the y-axis. It's also the beginning point. And in this case, the graph crosses the y-axis right here, which have the coordinates 0, 3, because it's where x is 0 and y is 3, which means that we already know the y-intercept for this graph, and it's 3. So we already have half the equation done. The only other thing left to find is the slope. Now there's a lot of different words for the slope and phrases for the slope. Often rise over run is used, or change in y over change in x, oftentimes represented with the little delta symbols. But all that's meaning is that the slope is how much the line goes up and down divided by how much the line goes left and right. And so we can pick two points, any two points on this graph, and simply connect them with a straight up and down line and a straight left and right line and count to see how much it's going up and down and left and right. So maybe we'll pick this point and the y-intercept. So I draw a straight up and down line and a straight left and right line to get there and we simply count. Now I started up here at 5 and I went down 2 and then I started at what looks like negative 3 and went over 3 to the right which means that my slope or my rise over run or my change in y and change in x just the amount I went up and down which was negative 2 over the amount I went left and right which was positive 3 and I find that my slope is negative 2 thirds which means that the equation of my line is y equals negative two-thirds x plus three. This next question is a really good example of a more abstract question. It simply tells us that if we have a line that's written in y equals mx plus b form and my m value is greater than zero, therefore it's positive, and my b value is less than zero, which makes it negative, which one of these graphs must my line be? So we're not going to plug in any numbers and simply do a bunch of operations and eventually end up with an answer, what I might call plug and chug. This question simply requires you to have an understanding of what m and b are at a conceptual level for you to answer it. So we need to know that m is the slope and the slope is the rise over the run again and all those different things we mentioned. Which means that as it goes to the right, it also goes up. So positive slopes go up from left to right. If you're trying to walk up it from left to right, you'd have to walk up the line. So we know that because my slope is positive, it has to go up from left to right. And so we can rule out these two examples because they are both going down which means these two examples would have slopes that are negative. So I know it must be one of these two. Which brings us to our second clue, and that was that b is negative. So we have to remember that our b 
is our y-intercept. It's the beginning value. It's the point where the line crosses the y-axis. And if b is negative, that means it crosses the y-axis below the x-axis. It crosses it down in the bottom of the graph somewhere, which means that because this graph has a 